Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Plugin Development. In this video, we are going to talk about what is WordPress REST API and why should we use it and how to actually register a custom endpoint for the WordPress REST API. Okay, so what is WordPress REST API? Well, before we talk about the WordPress REST API, uh, the REST means, okay, so what is WordPress REST API? Well, it's a way of accessing WordPress data in representational state XML or JSON format. The full form of REST is representational state transfer. So the WordPress REST API allows us to access the WordPress data in XML or JSON format. Now you can perform the CRUD operations on WordPress database, which means with the help of the WordPress REST API, you can make a GET request, which means get the data from WordPress. Uh, you can create any data, maybe create posts, categories, uh, taxonomies, etc. Or you can delete some data from Word into WordPress. You can delete some data and you can also update the data. You can perform the CRUD operations using uh, the WordPress REST API. Okay. Uh, you can also use WordPress as a headless CMS, which means that you can just use WordPress for the content and you can have a front end in any of your favorite technology, let's say uh, React or using Next.js frameworks or Gatsby, etc., or even the mobile applications and just fetch the data using the WordPress REST API. You can create a single page application on top of WordPress and WordPress REST API unlocks the data to create a brand new interactive front end experience. So for example, if you want to create um, some search experience for the user or some filters where you don't want the page to be refreshed, well, you can use the either Ajax or you can use the WordPress REST API to make a call to WordPress to get the data, to fetch the data depending on different parameters that user has selected or maybe the query user has typed in the search box. And then you can get the data and using JavaScript, you can manipulate the DOM and you can show that content to the user without having to reload the page every time he changes the selection of the filters. Okay, so having said that, now we talk about the endpoints and routes. So we're going to be registering routes with endpoints. We need to know what they are. So first we'll talk about the endpoints. So endpoints are basically functions available through the API that perform the CRUD operations. And they perform certain functions like taking some number of parameters and returning data the, to the client. So let's say uh, if the user has typed some query in the search box, you want to take that query as a search parameter and then pass that to the function. And that function will perform some operation, make a database query in WordPress, and then get the data based on the query that's been searched and then return it through that endpoint. Now, a route is the name that you use to access these endpoints that is used in the URL. So, so when you are creating your endpoints, it has certain route which allows WordPress to know which endpoint needs to be called so that, so that we understand what type of operation needs to be performed. It's important to note that one route can have multiple endpoints associated with it as well, which means you create one route that can be of type get, which is to get the data. It could be of type post, which means sending a post request of sending some data to the to WordPress with the help of post request, put and delete as well. So let me give you an example. Let's say we have this endpoint called example.com slash wpjson slash wp slash v2 ns posts. You can see that it's the same URL, but this is a get request. And this one is a post request. So even though the URL is the same, the type of the request is different. One is get and second is post. So this means that a route can have multiple endpoints. Uh, this route has a get endpoint as well as a post endpoint. I will explain to you the URL structure and what these WP, V2, WPJS and all of these things in a moment. Okay. Now WordPress already has the core endpoints. So let me take you through the endpoints that are already available in WordPress. And then in the next video, we're going to talk about how to register your own custom endpoint with the WordPress REST API. So if you go to the developer wordpress.org slash REST hyphen API, you will see there's a whole handbook 
which gives you all the necessary information that you can get. And you can actually learn more information about WordPress REST API from here. Here we have using the REST API, extending the REST API, you have endpoint reference, right? So let's say you want to access the posts from WordPress, you can click on this one and you can see that different schema. And let's take an example. Let's say you want to get the posts. So this is your get request. I'm going to replace this root URL with mine. Okay, I have replaced the root URL with the my local URL over here, but the rest of the thing is the same. If I hit it, you can see that I get all the posts, around 10 of them, because that's the number by default. So these are all the posts, you've got the ID, slug, link, all of the information. This is the default WordPress REST API for getting the posts. Okay, if you're wondering how am I getting this formatted data, well, I'm using a Chrome extension called JSON Formatter that allows me to get this in nice and clean formatted way. Okay, so you can read more about it, about the core API uh, from this one. So you can get tags, you can get uh, categories, pages, search results, all of that information, all right? So that's about it for this video. I'm gonna see you in the next video and we'll continue further in creating the REST API endpoint. All right, so I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. Do follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran Ed Sayed and do give the super thanks to support my work. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.